Today we're going to be doing surveying with AutoCAD and so this is Lesson 11 and you should be able to download uh, Lesson11ICA.dwg uh, file onto your computer. Make sure you save it somewhere that's not on the desktop probably. If you're on one of the remote machines, don't uh, leave it on that machine when you're done. Make sure it's saved in one of your own files on the H drive or the S drive uh, for that so it doesn't get erased. So here's what it would look like when you download it. I've drawn in for you what a section looks like. And if you've gone through the lecture and part of today's lesson, you'll already know what a section is. This is a survey section, a township and range, and within the township, a survey township, not a, a civil township. Within a survey township, we have a section. Sections are broken into quarters, and then in quarter quarters, and it can be a quarter, 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 and so forth and so on. So I've just made it a little more simple and just showed you in corners, quarters uh, through here. This is section 19 of some township, right? some uh, big township. And if we zoom in, we can see down here is the section numbers. This is exactly how we show it usually on plots and um, in survey documents for that. This is showing you, this is a corner symbol for a corner section. And this is showing you what each of the section numbers are around it. And if you go, again, go through the lecture, it, it tells you how we number these sections within a township for that it's not obvious <laughs> it kind of zigzags back and forth how we number those sections so this is a, a corner section and we'll start from there so if we uh, look at today's let me zoom back out if we look at today's instructions uh, so first off uh, download this then we're gonna um, grab my oops my layer manager uh, box I already have it open first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a layer called survey so this uh, this was sent to us this is our default template in the background I'm gonna create a layer called um, if it works come on there we go Oop, I'm clicking the wrong button <laughs> need to do one little star on it to make a new layer so I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna call it survey as the instruction said the survey the instructions say then make our color white okay it already is it's continuous yes and my line weight is going to be 0.5, so I'm going to change the line weight. Just clicked in there. There's my 0.5. Okay, got it. All right, I'm all good. And I'm going to make this layer active so that everything we draw from now on is going to be on that one. There we go. So now it's active, and we're all uh, ready to go on that. All right, and let me, I'm going to hide, I'm going to hide the survey manager, our layer manager over here. Oops. No, no, no. There we go. All right. So now, all right. Now it won't get in the way. It's going to auto hide over there. So I made <coughs> that active, and I made it. Gave it a line type, the or line weight. And to see the line weights, AutoCAD has this toggle down here. It's a show or hide line weight. If I turn that on, you can see everything bolded, got bolder. So it actually is showing you the line weights. You can toggle these on and off because sometimes if lines are too uh, big to, to have a too high of a line weight it's hard to see what's going on underneath them and so you can toggle off the line weights and it shows a default minimal uh, line weight and sometimes it makes it less confusing other times you want to turn it on because the it helps you to figure out which line you're looking at right the ones with different line weights mean something different and it help you toggle it too if you don't have this little button the show hide line weight on your toolbar come over here to the far right corner and over here is your line weight toggle. And you can turn that on and off. All right. And that's what this is doing is turning on and off the button. So it's off. Now, now I've added that button. Let's click over here. Now I can turn on and off the line weights. All right. And there's a, there's a text command that does the same. This is the way to get it on the toolbar. So I'm going to leave this on so that you can see this easier in the video. And then, uh, it'll you know, be bolder for you to see. All right, so there we go. I've got that. So I've made my survey layer. The next thing, uh, this is step three. Step three says type in units. There's units. And we've done this before. We've changed precision. We've changed what our insertion scale is and what our, our background scales are. Today we're going to be doing surveying. And we talked about bearings in the lecture. And we have to switch AutoCAD to run not on degrees, 
uh, standard degree angles but on bearings because we're going to type in exact um, property records and those use bearings and so we're in units we're going to uh, dialog box shows up we're going to change our length precision to be two decimal places that's all we ever use in measurements and surveying is to the hundredth of a foot right which is pretty accurate right that's hard to measure with a tape measure even to get a hundredth of a foot in there so that's all we need we need two decimal places and then we're going to change our angle type <coughs> to surveyors units and we're not going to do decimal degrees we're going to use surveyors units which is going to get switched over here here's our precision and you can see it looks like a bearing north so many degrees so many uh, minutes so many seconds east all right and that's what we want we want to make sure it, it rounds to uh, two seconds and or uh, sorry zero zero seconds two decimal places in the seconds and it's doing that so we're all good there and so we can click OK and we have now converted our drawing to be ready to do uh, surveying and follow these property ones so that was step five we're now on to step six we've in your notes we've got a property description and we're going to follow that and what we're going to do is we're going to use the um, relative coordinate input right we did this way back in lesson one or two where we we're doing relative coordinates and which is relative means that from wherever you start your line you're telling it to go so far and do so much Oops. Uh, once once that line has been started and so i'm going to zoom in down here i'm going to click this line right now relative is based off of this start point over here where am i going to go what angle and what distance and we didn't use it in the bearing before but we just we did type in distances and angles <clears throat> right and that was a relative that's relative measurements that's relative coordinate system and for drawing lines with an autocad and so if we wanted to do a sample one right so i'm going to say use the at symbol to get started so i have to type in the at symbol and now let's say i'm going to go 100 feet and then i'm going to use the less than symbol to say I'm going to go to an angle and I'm going to go um, yeah, I'm going to start north I'm going to start five degrees use D for degrees um, and I'm going to go 12 minutes and 13 seconds to the east all right that's my bearing there it is and it drew in this piece of the line all right and so that was that distance and that that bearing and I went north, which would be straight up, right? Um, and then I went five degrees to the east, right? And 12 minutes, 13 seconds, and so forth at a certain length. And so there's my relative line um, that I've drawn in using that system. And we're going to do that now following a, a, real, a real survey from our uh, property record uh, for that. And so we're going to input these as we go. So you start with the at symbol. And then you, you have to start with N for north, and then uh, uh, then whatever your angle is, using D for the degree symbol. And then you have to end with another uh, angle, or direction, sorry, east, west, uh, or it could be north or south, depending on where you started right, for that. All right, so we're going to follow this, this property description, and we're going to start uh, drawing this in. And let me uh, pull up the... So we're going to follow this property description. I'm going to zoom it in here a little bit, and I'm going to drag it over so we can see it in the screen while I draw it. Let's hope I can get everything to display at once. i got to resize the box here. Just give me a second. All right. And let's get rid of that piece. Uh, all right. I'm going to display. Here's my uh, PDF for this I'm trying to display this up here without getting everything too complicated oh well when I'm drawing an AutoCAD it's going to disappear uh, because AutoCAD screen becomes active all right so here is um, I'm gonna pop it back up all right so we're in the southwest quarter of section 19 township 36 north range 6 east Elkhart County Elkhart County Elkhart Township Elkhart County Indiana to being described as commencing all right, so we're going to begin in the southwest corner of said quarter section. What quarter section? This quarter section up here, it, which is the southwest quarter of section 19. All right, does this sound confusing? Yes. <laughs> yes, these things are confusing. All right, so I'm in the southwest. Here's section 19. All of this is section 19. 
zoom in a little so you can see better. On the video here is section 19. I'm in the southwest quarter, so that's this. Here's my southwest quarter. I even labeled it for us. All right. Here's the southeast quarter. North is always up. So this is my southwest quarter. And now according to my instructions, southwest quarter, according to the instructions, I'm in the southwest quarter of section 19. Found it. Great. Commencing at the southwest corner of said quarter section, being the southwest quarter, designated as 0.201. So on a plot, or we would see that it was showing 0.201 in the actual survey plot for this. It would actually show that. I didn't include that in here. Uh, ignore that part. We don't need to label the point numbers yet. Um, so we're commencing at that corner. So we are in this quarter section, commencing at the southwest corner. That's this guy. All right, let's zoom in. All right, let's zoom in. Zoom is your friend. Get in as close as you can, right? So to be accurate, we want to get as close as you can. Here's that corner. Here it is. I'm going to get even closer because I knew I had to snap here in a second to that. What are we going to do? We're going to commence at that point. Uh, this corner of that said quarter section, it's 0.201 if we wanted to know. And for future reference, and we are going to go north 89 degrees, 56 minutes, 12 seconds east along the south line of said quarter section. Wait a minute, we're all on the south line, but it's starting out going north. Well, we're going north and then we're turning over almost 90 degrees and we're going to follow that the line of that quarter section. Uh, 1128 feet, 0.45, to a point number 100. Right. So the, the way they write these, and this is how they, they are, this is a real, this is a real document. Um, they put the feet at the end. So you almost read it backwards. Right? So you're going to go 1,128 feet at this angle. And that's how we're going to put it in AutoCAD. Because AutoCAD wants the feet first, wants the distance first. Then they want the angle to use relative coordinates. And we're starting at the southwest corner. Great. I'm going to zoom in a little more uh, for that guy. And now I'm going to start my line in 112845. Remember that number. <laughs> so... Uh, here we are. Make sure you don't snap to one of these other, these crosshatch lines, right? You want to make sure you're dead center. Bam. Got it. Okay. All right. We're coming over here. And now I'm going to go 1128.0. Whoa. Sorry. All right. Screwed it up already. I have to do at symbol because it's a relative distance. 1128.45 angle, right? So it's... Actually, it is drawn in the line now at the right distance. Look at that. And now I can change the angle. It's reading out, you know, in live over here what my bearing is as I move that around. It's kind of cool, right? So up here, I've got north. I'm only like 2 degrees to the east. Now I'm 29 degrees to the east. Now I'm 66 degrees to the east. Now I'm 89 degrees to the east. If I drop below that, now I am would start south. And this is south. Um, Six degrees, 50 degrees south, 75 degrees east, south, 87 degrees east, right? So it's either north or south and then east or west is how we do these bearings. And so if I'm just north of due east, it's going to be north so many degrees east. If I'm just south of due east, it's going to be south so many degrees east from that, right? And the greater the angle is from the north or the south, the larger that, that degree is All right, for that. So that's that's where I'm at. And what was what was my bearing supposed to be? Bearing is supposed to be 89 degrees, 56, 12 east. All right. So back here. So I'm going to go north, 89 degrees, 56 minutes, 12. Okay. You know what? I don't remember things <laughs> 56 12 east. All right, back here. 56 12 east. Get it right there. We go. All right, so we've drawn, we've drawn a line. Let's zoom in. Yeah, it's right on that south line. So we're following the south line of section. Great, it's all lining up, and I'm where I should be. We started over here at the corner. We have, we have come over 1128 some feet, and we have followed that south line at a certain bearing. And you should be right on top of this kind of magenta colored line, you know, whatever that color is. And yeah, 1128.45 feet. This would be 0.100 if you look at the plan for this, which I did not include here. All right. 
And that is just telling the surveyor, start over here at the corner because everything in surveying starts at a quarter, at a section point, <clears throat> a corner section point. And then you basically say, drive over this way, you know, go 14 miles down Highway 12 until you get to this point. Now you start the actual survey. And that's our point of beginning. And so we've got to the point of beginning. So we told you uh, everybody can go out in, in the real world and find this uh, section point this corner point these are usually in the center of the road uh, intersections and there's a, a marker for them if they're and especially if they're not in the road there's a marker that's visible you can uh, sometimes you have to dig them up sometimes you'll see a surveyor out there and there'll be a little hole in the road and they've got their equipment dead center in an intersection they have found the section corner and they are starting on this publicly referenced section corner which everyone can find and they are going to start their survey from there and move somewhere and so and that's what we did. We started over here. The instructions said to go this far. We started to this, some point number, right? Uh, which is <clears throat> point number 100. And it is the point of beginning, the POB. So we'd label this on uh, surveys as a POB. That's our point of beginning. And that is where we're starting, right? This first line, it's just getting you to start it. And we aren't even gonna keep that line later. We'll erase it later uh, for that. But that's our point in the beginning. And from there, now we're actually going to draw the real stuff, the real parcel, the real survey. And sometimes this, this description of to get to the point of beginning is like three or four different lines long uh, until you get to the actual point of beginning. Just keep that in mind. But we start at a corner, a known corner, a known point, and we basically drive in until we get to the point of beginning. This is an easier one. We have a single line along this section and then we're at our point of beginning so this is an easy one compared to what we we sometimes see in surveys right for that so that's our point of beginning uh also being the point of beginning right so now from there and this this gets really complicated you'll easily lose your place where you are i already did uh once and so in in the office i'll print this out and I'll, I'll make a mark, you know, with my pencil, sometimes a colored pencil. Okay, I'm here. And that way, when I look, glance up at the screen, then back at the sheet, I can see where I was for that. We don't have that luxury on computer screens like this. And most of you probably can't print these out at home anyway. The, um, but in an office, that's what I would do. I'd print this out so I can keep track of exactly where I was. Right? It is so easy to get lost, right? And then you got to remember you're doing everything backwards, right? So we've got to the point in the beginning. That was this over here. Now we're going to go 30.16 feet at this angle, All right? So we read the distance first, then we back up and see what angle we were at. So let's do 30.16 feet um, at 0 degrees, 18 minutes, 59 degrees west, right? So that's almost due north, just slightly west of due north is what that's telling us. All right, 30.16 feet, jump back over here. Now what's my next line? All right, I'm going to zoom in so we can see things better. All right, I'm going to do the at symbol because it's a relative. At 30.16 angle. And see, it's kind of waiting for me. Oops, wrong angle. Lower, there, jumped over. Great. I'm going to go north. It was zero degrees what? Uh, what was it after that? Do, 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 do. Zero degrees, 18 minutes, 59 west. 0, 18, west. So, um, so we are, are going north, 0 degrees, 18 minutes, 59 seconds west. There it is. Okay, we got it in. All right, so we've drawn the second piece. Whew. This is going to be long, right? Um, we're only doing two, <coughs> two parcels uh, today. So that's, keep that in mind, the entire in class is doing two parcels because this is uh, meticulous. It is meticulous and slow. All right, so where were we? We did that. We did 1859. Hopefully I typed them in right. Yeah, I did. Down here I can see it. Yep. All right, got those in right. Good. To point 101, designated on said plat, right? Well, you, if we saw the map, we could see that's point 101. From there, now we're going to go south, 89 degrees west. 35.02 feet to point 102. So we're going to go 35.02, I don't probably won't remember all those. All right, 3502. So at symbol, 35.02 angle, 
I think we are going to go south this time, right? South. Down here, south, 894101 west. 894101. So, south, 894101 west. Okay, we came back that direction. Awesome, right? It's kind of, well, sometimes you'll see the, the plat first. And you'll kind of know what you're drawing, but it's kind of fun to see this take shape, right? It's like connect the dots. It's telling you, go here, draw this, and you're like, oh, now I see the shape. Well, it's, it's coming together. All right, so that was 89.41.01. I can see down here. Yes, I typed that in right. Great. I went 35.02 feet. Great. And that's 0.102. All right. Thence, meaning move forward then and go on and do this and do this and do this plot. All right for that All right this thing is a little bit long All right but that is a true uh, survey description the survey descriptions you'll notice always come back to the point of beginning so it's going to do this it's going to do a bunch of things it's going to you're going to draw a shape you'll see this shape revealed as you move along it's actually we'll plot it in here in the instructions later uh, for that so you can compare and make sure your shape looks the same you when it says um this final thing east along said line 85 feet to that also being a point on the south line of said quarter section and then you're going to go south from there blah 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 so many feet back to the point of beginning all right so surveyors as a check on themselves always when you draw a shape you should always return back to the point of beginning especially in a plat when you're doing plats like this which is um, property descriptions you're always going to come back to that point of beginning you had better be on top of the point you started with as a point in the beginning. That's your check. That's how you check to make sure that you did it right. Um, if you're hanging out here in space and your point in the beginning was over here, right, you did it wrong. You know that something is wrong. One of your angles is wrong. One of your distances is wrong. Or maybe they wrote this wrong. This was checked by a surveyor, though, and... and uh, has been platted and everything else and recorded so pretty sure this one's right it's been plotted before people know they checked it out yes in surveying you can be off a couple hundredths um, because no survey is perfect all right for that uh, this was you know done in an office and they checked it it should come right back on directly on top of that point if you're off um, they'd say that in a survey that'd be called a bust. If, if you busted the survey, you're off over here. Well, you're, in this case, you're bust, you busted the plotting and so you're way off. So that's your check. That's how you're going to check and make sure that you did this right uh, for that. And in the interest of time to keep this tutorial a little bit shorter, I'm not going to plot all those lines, right? I showed you how to do it. You're just going to keep doing that. You're going to track through that whole diagram until you get there, right? And when you're done, you're going to see this. You're going to get this, and you're going to do actually two different parcels. We started on this one. This was the parcel we started. You'll follow that around. It'll come back to the point of beginning. And then, you know, I had that original section of how to get to this point of beginning. That line there, I deleted that when I was done. All right, we didn't need that. It was about over here. All right, I don't need this line. Once I'm at the point of beginning, I don't need that. I can get rid of it. All right, this little corner right here is this guy. That's this little corner right there that's well that's the little <laughs> two little pieces of that first parcel i drew in there uh, and then you're going to come in and you're going to draw in this parcel all right and that's going to be the next piece Let me make this a little bit bigger and there's a in your instructions right it's going to tell you this is what it should look like yep we got that over here everything is great now you're going to do the second parcel here's the second one and the second one says it's in the southwest quarter of section 19, blah, 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 blah. Yes. Beginning at the southeast corner of said quarter section. So now we're going to start. Zoom out and get this thing out of the way. All right. Let me move. Let's move this over. Now you're, it's in the same quarter section. Now you're going to start in the southeast corner. Before we start in the southwest, this second parcel, you're starting over here. You're starting over in the southeast corner. And so you'll snap into that uh, corner. And again, a surveyor in the field is going to find that corner and start uh, working through that. And so that's what that's what this one's doing, is you're starting in the southeast corner, this time instead of the southwest corner. All right. And now you're going to move along the south line, which is this down here. You're going to come over to a point of beginning, and then you're going to... Um, 
draw the shape in following these instructions right for that <clears throat> and then you're going to get back to the point of beginning for that you'll end up you'll have this shape all right so there's your clue you should land right on top of your point of beginning when you're done come back to that point of beginning and land right on top of it it should look like this if you followed all the instructions properly for there it is really easy to get one of these angles one of these bearings wrong um, for that so yeah okay. Um, just it's this proofreading at that point you're going to go back and you're going to check these numbers okay 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 that's where i did it wrong all right for there okay that's kind of uh that's the process it is it is meticulous it is you have to be real focused on where you're at and not lose your spot in the survey description all right these survey descriptions by the way fairly easy all right we've got i don't know four or five lines after your point of beginning this one the same maybe six total lines after the point of beginning some of these these property surveys are a page and a half long of that stuff and you've you've got you know 15 20 different um angles and bearings you have to follow through there or sometimes they throw arcs in we're even going to do that uh, in indiana we rarely well, we rarely have those sometimes in in a highway survey we might uh, have that um, that's just one more level of uh difficulty we're going to skip for today so today let's just learn to follow a survey and plot those lines so that's what we end up with that's what your your plot should look like when you're done right that's where we're at so this this takes us up through step 11 in the instructions so now we're doing step 12. now we're going to do a layout tab right so over here's your layout tabs here's our model space that's what we've been drawing everything in All right remember we don't put any uh any text we want to use for plotting or dimensions in the model space almost never um, that is a big no-no we're going to do we're going to be smart about it we're going to put all of our stuff in the layout tab because that's where we like to put stuff all right so we're going to go to a layout tab all right jump over here here's my layout tab all right for that actually i'm going to make a new one and so let's make a new layout tab and we jump there layout two Ooh, there we go all right when you make a new layout tab it automatically draws in a uh, viewport for you right so here's the layout here's my layout tab which takes me to the layout here's my layout that's the boundary is this black box out here now yours it may be white as starting with but that's your paper space within paper space then you have a viewport that's this guy and inside the viewport is your window back in the model space and you can see inside my window here in the model space i can see my drawing that we just did if i double click in there like we did before now i can zoom in i can uh, change what and pan around and can change what you can see through that window double click back out here in paper space okay back to paper space great so here's my my layout so i made my new layout i've jumped in there so we did this is step 12. um now i'm going to create a uh, bound and i'm going to create a new <clears throat> so i had a one called viewports uh, that's how that came in there you may not have that it doesn't really matter uh, what layer your viewport's on it may be on zero so i'm going to create an oops wrong button. i'm going to create a new layer called border per instructions and my color is going to be green so i'm going to choose green there and it's going to be continuous and i'm going to change my line weight to be 0.5 because i want this line to be a little bit bolder and to be able to see see it well great i'm going to make it active so that's my new active layer awesome for that i think i'm done with this made it yep and now i'm going to change my plot settings for this guy Oop, there we go and so you remember to do that we come over here i'm going to right click i'm going to go to page setup manager great got it layout two that's the tab i want to work on that's the, the page setup i want yes i'm going to modify it come over here it's going to give me some random printer which is probably whatever your default printer is in your computer right now i uh, don't want that because i we're going to plot this to a pdf and make an adobe document out of it so i'm going to do that when you change the name of the printer it changes your options for what your paper sizes are so if you don't see the paper size listed in this in the instructions you may not you need to change this first go to dwg to pdf first All right if i change to something else it's going to change what the options are i have for paper sizes it's kind of weird why it does that 
We're going to do drawing the PDF. Got it. What else does it tell me to go? I'm going to go to ANSI expand A11 by so. I'm going to look for, uh, here's all these different paper sizes. I don't know what it was to start with. Architectural sizes. I'm going to look for ANSI. Do, 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 do. Here is ANSI. Great. And I'm looking for expand A11 by 8. F, expand A, and I want this one. And it looks like it's in, in uh, um, I was going to say it's portrait mode. It's not portrait. It's the other one, landscape. So we're, we're longer than we are tall. And that's what we like in this one. So we want that. That looks great. We're going to plot the layout. That sounds right. And we are going to change our plot style to monochrome. Might as well set it up all now. Oop, not a grayscale. Monochrome. There we go. And I'm going to scale the line weights. All right, so that if they look thicker on my screen, they'll look thicker on the plot. So we're going to scale line weights, drawing a PWG, ANSI expand, A11 to 8 by 8 and a half, monochrome, all looks good. Click OK, and I can click Close, right? We didn't print yet. We haven't plotted, but we just set this tab up in the paper space to be what we want it to be. So when we're ready to plot, we're ready to go. Everything is great. Okay, we've done that. Now we're going to make a nice title block around it. We did this last week. You should be, you know, more or less good at it. <laughs> I'm going to use the rectangle command. You don't have to use this. You can draw individual uh, lines if you want. Make sure you are on border. So you've set that layer to be active because we're going to draw this in on border. So here we go. I'm going to create this guy and I am going to select D for dimensions. Um, what's the length I want on this? I'm going to say, yeah, let's go 10. And what's my width? I'm going to say 7.5. Spacebar, great. I have to click to save it. There we go. All right, I drew my border in. That's you're going to see that on the sheet. You're going to see this nice border now around, around it. The dotted line in this layout is showing you your plot boundary. Right, anything that's outside of this little dotted gray line is not going to get plotted because that's the limits of what your it thinks your printer can do. Uh, so your printers can't print typically it's right to the edge of the page. So there's some boundary out there. My border is outside of that. So I'm going to select that border. I'm going to drag that sucker back in and make sure I'm kind of centered in that, that plotted area. All right. Okay. So I'm inside the little dotted boundary. This should plot. And I've got my border. Awesome. All right. Here's my viewport. Here's my border. Here's my, my page, my paper space. And I'll set up for that. Well, okay. What's That's step 13. Step 14, I want a little title block down here at the bottom that's supposed to be an inch tall. And this is, we're measuring now in paper space, we're measuring in inches, right? In model space, we were measuring in feet. Uh, that's just, I mean, that's why we use paper space partly is because we want to relate something in model space to a, a true piece of paper with real dimensions, which, you know, in U.S., we are using inches for that. So I'm going to draw in the easy way for me to offset that. I'm just going to draw a line down here. And you can't see it because I put it right on top of my borderline. I'm going to use my favorite offset command. I'm going to give it a one inch offset. Tag that line. Come up. There we go. I got my one inch border now at the bottom. Nice. Okay. And that is step 14. Step 14 then says change this viewport. I mean, this viewport's hanging over into my, my border. Yeah, that's great. It's not going to be looking good. So I'm going to snap this thing into match this upper window in my new title block and border. So I'm just going to snap these guys in to that. Sorry. All right. There we go. Escape out. All right. Now you can't see the viewport <clears throat> uh, edge anymore. Remember, that can be a problem. We had that trouble about two lessons ago, trying to find that edge of that viewport which was hidden behind your border. But when you plot this, you don't want to see that little thin line where the, the viewport edge is. So we hide it behind our title block borders, our line weights. And these are nice big fat lines and they kind of hide things nicely and it makes it look clean, clean and nice right? for that. Okay, so that's that's the end of step 14. So our, our viewport now is exactly within, I just highlighted it, is exactly with, within this upper frame of our border. And I can get back out in paper space. There we go. All right, now we're going to create a new layer called border text because guess what? We're going to add text to this, this border, right? So let's come over here to layer manager. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this one border text. Whoa, test, not test. Let's uh, text. 
test of my spelling abilities. And we're going to make this white. Where'd you go? There we go. White. Great. Line weight 0.3. Where's my line weight? Here's my line weight. And I'm, oh, that's line type. Cancel that. Line weight is 0.3. Got it. All right. And we are in good shape. And I'm going to make this active. Okay. There we are. And now I'm going to create a new text style. Remember, come back over here. Here's here's my text. Here's my dimensions. Here's my leaders. I'm going to go in uh, text. I'm going to manage text styles. And I'm going to create one. It's already hidden in here. I've got one called title text. You can create a new one. And you'll, you'll name it title text. We're going to do century gothic. Great. Font style is regular. Height is 0.3. Awesome. We leave these alone. Right, we're great. Okay, so we are set to go. And I'm going to, that's step 16. And I'm going to add now the text is shown in your instructions in step 16. So I'm going to do multi-line text. I'm going to create a box down here. Come on. There we go. Multi-line text, create a box. And yeah, there it goes. It's a little slow. CE 151. All right, let's line this up. This looks a little off. There we go. Let's see, 151. I'm going to put some more text over here and some over here. Great. All right, very simple border. You can spend a lot of time and make this beautiful if you want. Um, we're moving on. 17, step 17 is we're going to change the scale in this, right? So now this was just, I've just been driving around, you know, using my middle wheel here to scroll in and out. There's no particular scale, but that's not how we do engineering drawings. We draw our engineering stuff and engineering to scale. What scale am I going to use? Well, here's, remember my little scale button over here. I can adjust that scale. Here's all this. What about 1 to 100? Oh, it's off the screen, right? It does not fit on a scale of 1 to 100, which means it's more than 1,000 feet long, right, for what we've got. Now, you can do scale to fit. That shows everything. That's not how we do it. We need to, um, we need to set our own scale, and I found that we can make one that's 1 to 200, and that will work just fine. And you can make your own right down here. It's in the book how to do that. <clears throat> if you scroll down in all these options, you can go to Custom. And in Custom, and this one I already made. I'm going to delete it. All right, I'm going to remake it. All right, so I'm going to do Add. And what am I going to call it? I'm going to call it 1 inch equals 200 feet because that's what I'm going to be using. All right, my paper units, this is in inches, is one. My drawing units, which is in feet, is 200. And it's that simple. Knock it in there. There it is. Click OK. All right, so now I've made the scale. I haven't chosen that scale yet. I'm going to center this thing so it doesn't shoot off the screen. And I'm going to come over here. All right, I'm going to pick my new scale. One to 200. Ah, there it is. All right, so now I'm at scale. <clears throat> Click out. So I'm, that was in model space. I've clicked back out to paper space now, right? You can check it here. I'm in paper space. Now I can't uh, accidentally change that scale. Now she's locked in for me, right? So that's great, All right? So I'm moving on. Now I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to call a new layer. I'm going to call this one dimensions, okay? I've actually already got one. I worked ahead. This is like those cooking shows, right? Um, you magically pull the finished product out of the oven. All right, I've already got dimensions in here. You know how to create these. It's going to be yellow. I'm going to make it a uh, line weight of 0.2, and I'm going to make it current. Yeah, do that. Great. Click back out here. I'm going to hide this guy. Come on. Why aren't you hiding? There we go. All right. Hide the layer manager. There I am. And my, if I go back to home here, dimensions is my active layer. And I can check that. Awesome. So we are ready to go. Dimensions. So now we're going to dimension this. And this gets a little tricky. The way we do it in surveying is we don't have these leader extensions out and then dimensions on here because we have these really long uh, shapes sometimes. And so we don't use leaders and arrows all the way down one side. Sometimes we'll have a little swoopy arrow that comes out on the off the edge. But quite often we just write the number in. And you know, it's a survey plot. You should know that's the <laughs> length of that line because we're not really dimensioning much else on these. Right? That's really it. You know, so we keep it simple. We try to keep it as simple as possible uh, for there. 
And so we've we've made that. All right, so we've created our layer, and now we're on step 19 in this. And now we're going to create a dimension style that matches this well. So we're going to go to annotate up here. And here is all of our dimensions. And I'm going to do manage dimension styles. I'm going to create a new one in my dimension style manager. And I'm going to call this one. I don't want to call this one. Let's call it survey. Right. <clears throat> and we're going to start with standard. Great. And continue. All right. And now I'm going to uh, adapt whatever I started with to match for my survey system, right, for this. And what are we going to, we start with lines, and originally it should, it'll show like this probably um, for that. And in your step 19, it shows you exactly what you should be clicking in here, right? And so here is, this is what would normally start with. We're going to suppress dimension one and dimension two lines, which means the little arrows either side of the number, because we don't usually show that. They're so long on these survey plots, they just get in the way. We're also going to show here the extension lines for doing dimensioning. We're going to also suppress those, right? We don't need to see that. Look, it looks very pale now. We've got nothing out here. All right, so let's check the other numbers in this. Our baseline, 0.38, check. Got that good. All right, now we're going to switch over to tab text. That's in the second box in your instructions. We want text height 0.1. Awesome, got it. And we want... Uh, you could do these as horizontal. You want to use aligned with the dimension line. Awesome. So it's going to be straight across following the, the line that you're dimensioning. For their offset distance from line, 0.09, yes. All right, we've got that all set. That looks good. And then on the next page of your instructions, 19 is continued. We also have to come over here to primary units. You have to make sure our precision is set to point two decimal places. That's all we want. Uh, we want two decimal places. It's also going to round off to, to two decimal places. Good. Is there anything else on here we need to check? No. I think everything else is good. We're going to click OK. All right. We've made a new dimension style called Survey. Great. We're going to click on it. We're going to set it current. And then we're going to close. And now up here you can see Survey is set as our current dimension style. It's ready to go. And you can toggle back and forth, right, easily. But we're going to do Survey. And then it gives you a little preview of what it looks like. All right, now we're ready for step 20. And the longer lines in here, where the text will actually fit, we're gonna we're gonna dimension right on right on here. And we're in paper space, great, because that's where we want dimension lines to live. We like them to be in in paper space. I'm gonna choose aligned because I want it to line up along the line. So I'm gonna do aligned, and like I'm gonna click in here, and there, bam. Right? Doesn't that look nice? That is very survey. <laughs> that is very survey, the way we do it in survey. All right, do another one. Let's do this guy. I'm going to snap to that, snap to that. Boom. All right, so the, and the short ones are, it's going to try to write it off to the side, and we're going to show you how to do that here in a second. So I'm going to keep dimensioning this guy, coming around. Right on the point. Try to be on the point. If you're on the point, if you aren't on the point, it'll give you the wrong dimension, All right? That's not good. Um, so there we go. And, and it'll give you the instructions uh, in, the, in the notes here. It'll, you can see what the finished one's supposed to look like. So you can get a hint if you think you're off. If you're having trouble seeing the yellow, the yellow dimensions, right? Remember, you can type in options, pop this up, go to, you've got files, go to display, go to colors. And mine pops up on the other window. Don't ask me why. And then you can change your background color, right? Uh, they often start this way with white, and then that yellow is really hard to read. I go to colors, and I change my background color to black. Now it looks nice. Slick. Look at that. All right, very easy to read. Um, for. And it's so fun to put these dimensions in. I'm going to put one more in because these are kind of fun. Fun until they don't work, and then you regret having done that. <laughs> right. Okay. So there we go. We've got my dimensions in. Apparently it rounded one of mine off. And then notes it says it's supposed to be 0.01. Uh, something slightly different. That's good enough. <clears throat> All right. We're moving on to 21. Now we're going to add some text and some leaders in. So we're going to do multi-leader. What, what style are we using for our multi-leader? We're going we're to change it to... Um, we're going to create a new one. We're going to call this guy Survey. Survey leader, so I don't 
I accidentally confuse it myself with the dimension style one, which has the same name. And what are we? And it gives you the boxes to check, make sure our size is 0.1. Our brake size is 0.125. It's by block. It's straight. Yep, that looks good. And click over to leader structure. We're going to have two leader points. Awesome. Um, set landing distance is 0.1. We've got a scale of one. All that looks good. And then we're going to finally come over here to content. And content, let me scroll my instructions forward. We're doing standard. Keep it horizontal. We've got a 0.1. Awesome. We're going to do middle of top line, middle of top line, 0.09. That all looks good. M text. Great. So you may have to change this on yours depending on what you started with. Mine looks like it's set to go. I'm going to kick survey leader, set it to current, close. Survey leader is now active. All right, so I'm ready to draw in. And now I'm going to use that, and I'm going to start drawing in uh, point numbers and, and so forth. So I'm going to do multiple. This is point number. Let me drag up here. This is point 101. All right. Bam. Look at that. That's so pro looking. Click this. This is point number 100 down here. Oops, don't need the space bar there. Look at that. Nice. And for these these little ones, you can't fit this big of a number in here uh, for a dimension in there. So we're going to use the multi-liter to dimension it. And so we're going to come over here, and we're going to say that one was 30.16 uh, feet. Right. There you go. And you can add, actually, in the dimension style, we could have added in that little mark for the feet uh, for there. I probably should have done that, but okay, you get the point. So you're going to go around and you're going to label all that. We're going to write in some really big labels uh, over here in, like, these corners, right? I don't know. Uh, which would show up on a normal survey plat. And this one is the southeast corner oops, of the southwest quarter. And it automatically switches it to that style. That's fine. Uh, of section 19, township 36 north, range 6 east, which actually you've been through the lecture portion of it today. Um, you'll understand what all that means. Elkhart County, Indiana. Right. So we can label all that stuff. Man. That's what we normally do. A lot of times we'll also label POB on here for point and beginning and so forth and so on. And so, yeah, it's starting to look like a real survey, like a real survey piece for that. So that gets us up uh, through step number 22. We've labeled things. There's more on here. I didn't do them all. Uh, so they'll let you, leave you to do some of these on here. And then now you're going to plot this, right? So you're going to come up here to the little plot. You've already set your page up to plot, right? We're going to click the plot symbol. It was going to, well, sorry, clicked out of it. There we go. Uh, it brings it up. It's ready to go. This is everything we set before. ANSI, expand A. It's a monochrome, scaled line weights. We're plotting the layout, which is this sheet. We're going to plot whatever's shown on that sheet. We can look and see what it's going to look like. It's like that. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Nice and clean. Nice bold lines. Easy to read. All right, for that, I'm not going to, well, I could plot it right now, but you won't be able to see <laughs> what it looks like when it plots. You make your plot, um, you'll upload that to Blackboard as part of the assignment, and then you also are going to upload, excuse me, you're going to upload this drawing file into that. So both of those things are going to be there. This one you're going to name as your last name underscore last 11 underscore ICA dot DWG, and then you're going to have a PDF which is also named your last name underscore less than 11 dot uh, oh, underscore ICA dot PDF. Right. And that is today's in-class portion. All right, so that's the tutorial to get you through today. Uh, good luck on that.